The VFX sequencer of FL Studio 21 might look a bit complicated at first, but once you start to understand it, it's the killer. Making it easy for someone who doesn't play the piano perfectly to create really great sounding sequences and arpeggios. My name is Thomas Foster, I'm a music producer from Salzburg and in this video I'll explain all the important functions of the VFX sequencer of FL Studio 21. Good to have you here, let's go! First thing we do is we load a synthesizer, the uh, Citrus, and here a preset, maybe short synth basic. Yeah, that sounds good. And now we click here on the button where it says basic with the white mouse, and we choose patcherize. And here we are. So let's close the Citrus and um, now in this window somewhere we click with the right mouse, uh, say add plugin um, here and at new we find the VFX sequencer. So the green cable shows us the notes, this, the yellow is audio and red are the parameters. So the green cable brings in the note I'm playing on the piano and the sequencer notes um, we patch to our uh, synthesizer and this cable here we erase. So we have one cable going to the VFX synthesizer. We don't want to hear the notes we're playing, we just want to hear the notes of the VFX. So that's why here's the next cable and yellow audio goes into FL Studio. We double click the VFX sequencer and the first thing we can do, we can choose some presets. So that's the sound if I play here something. Let's choose another preset from the list. Okay. And we can go through the presets with this arrow here. to get some inspirations, or we can use here the cube uh, to choose per random something from this menu, like this. Or we can create our own arpeggiator or sequencer. For this we go to the initial program, 0, 0, 0, something like this. And now we can change from the simple view to the advanced view to the complex view. Now let me move this a little bit so you can see everything. Again, simple, complex, we take the advanced view. Looks complicated, but it's not. It's very easy. So the most important is the editor. That's where we can make the magic. What we see in the editor, we can choose here. Now we see the velocity, now we see the octave, the gate time, and so on. And here on the right side, we can change the complete setting. For example, the gate time here, where it says arpeggiator, gate time, 90%. Now it's short. Or we can add a little swing. Um, for now, I would change something, um, the sync. How fast is it playing? Now it's playing in 16th. Let's go to eight notes. Yeah, that's here, arpeggiator, sync, eight notes. And um, normally the restart is normally on the beat. So when you are in the middle of the bar, it plays from nine because that's where the middle of the bar is, right? But for this tutorial, I want to go to key. So it's always when I press the key starting here in the beginning, so you better understand what is happening. We always start here in the beginning. Okay, we come later a little bit more in detail to this uh, things here, but now we come to the more important where the music is happening, the editor. And we start with velocity. So we go to velocity and now we see the velocity of every note. I'm simply playing one note 
And now we can uh, change the velocity very easy, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, th uh, so something like this. Pretty cool. Or we can do it like that. And now maybe we want to go back that everything is in the middle and that's not so easy. That's much easier if we use this little menu here where we say initialize. Yeah, that's right. I initialize. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's not so easy if, uh, if you're from Austria to have the right word in English. So, um, again, uh, initialize, we go back like this, or we can shift everything up. So now every note is the velocity on 96. Let's go to 97, shift up 98, or shift down 97 again, and initialize 96. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's go to octave. Now we can say every second note I want to hear one octave higher or lower or two octaves higher. And now here we have the poly button. Now we can add an octave so we hear two, three octaves at the same time. Wonderful. Let's go back and say initialize and take a look to the gate time. That's how long the note is playing. Very easy. Let's do it like this and like that. Now if we click this button, you can change from gate time to the channel. And now you could say the second note I want to hear on channel 2 and the third note on channel 9. Uh, at the moment we are just working on one channel, so nothing is changing, doesn't matter. Let's stay here, we go back to gate time uh, and continue with the step type. Um, if I play a chord, um, we hear just one note, but if I go here to chord, we would hear the chord. Uh. Or we could use random to choose one note of the three notes I'm playing. I'm playing C minor, so C, uh, E flat and G. But per random, we hear a different note on every step. Um, let's go back to normal. And here we have rest. Um, here we can make the note longer. Instead of putting it off, right? Tie, um, there you could um, make it legato or a slide mode that depends on the synthesizer, uh, of the setting of the synthesizer you are using. Let's go to the scale step. Here you can transpose uh, some notes. So we go here to plus three and here to minus two. Wonderful. Uh, here also you can shift up everything or initialize it. Note select, that's very important. So if you play a chord at the moment, we always hear the first note. I would call it the root note. Um, but you also can hear the second note on the third note of the chord. And you can make it up to five notes. I play now five notes. Um, and we also here we can make it poly, so we can make complete chords, for example, something like this. Yeah, but the simpler way to get this result, if I initialize this again, 
uh, would be to go here on the step type to chord, right? Yeah. Okay, we go back to node select. The root key is um, the same like N1, but uh, there are some special settings where it makes it different if we choose the root key or the N1. Um, but let's initialize this. Let's take a look to scale. On scale, I can say here uh, you play uh, one note and you don't look at which notes I'm playing. So don't use a, call, a note from C major, what I'm playing. Use just any note. And for sure we can um, scale this note. So this was the number four. So I, if I don't like this note, and doesn't matter which note I'm playing, it's always the same note. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the most important features, and for sure we can combine them to create something pretty cool, right? And so on and so on. You see, it's very easy to have fun. Let me initialize everything we did. And here we have four pages. So how do I come to the next pages? Uh, you have here the steps. You can say I'm just using two steps. Or you can say I'm using 26 steps. Then the next steps are on the second page. So you can have up to 64 steps over four pages. Uh, if you have more than one page, you can use auto scroll. And now it's changing to the next page. Let's go back to have 16 steps like this. Okay, then we don't need auto scroll. You can lock a page. Um, yeah, and here you can start to turn the arpeggiator off, then it's doing nothing. Uh, or you can say just work if I'm using minimum two notes, right? I play now one note, nothing is happening. I play three notes, we hear this. Also the minimum three notes, right? Um, you can filter the MIDI input, you can filter the notes uh, you want to use. Uh, this is the maybe most important with the gate time and the swing. And some other nice features. Uh, you have an out output filter and you can make the display smaller by just displaying uh, seven steps. Um, maybe we have to choose something like this to see it. Yeah, now, now it's bigger. Right. And now I have a super tip for you. If you want to produce the next major hit, you need this sounds here. We at Mugent have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugent Player. Each instrument in the Mugent Player comes with a composition. MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session so you can be inspired not only by a sound but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. This means that every time you open the plugin there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double click to load it into your plugin. In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches, and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new.
But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugen Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugen Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments, MIDI files, and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions. Mugent to make music.